Today we have a series of Mila dishwasher repairs that deal with some of the really common things that the Mila dishwasher experiences. They're all pretty easy to do. The first one is going to be pretty easy to do. It's the F01 error with five lights flashing. And this is something wrong with the temperature sensor. It may be that you have to replace the temperature sensor or it might be the water coming in is too hot. Another one would be the Mila dishwasher keeps draining. It's very common and you close the door and it just keeps draining but it won't go to a new cycle. Easy one to fix too. This one would be how to replace the fill valve. Sometimes the fill valve lets in too much water or not, en not enough water and this is an easy one to replace. F14 error has something to do with not enough water pressure. Something's wrong with the circulation pump. And this shows us how to take apart the circulation pump and how to repair it. A little bit harder to do. This is how to clean the circulation pump. There might be something caught in the impeller. It shows you how to take it apart and do some of the basic cleaning of the pump. This is a Mila dishwasher that won't drain. This is really easy, really fast, and often involves the air gap thing located over by the kitchen faucet. This is the Mila intake drain light is flashing. And this is how to reset it and get your dishwasher draining again and also reset the computer. This is the Mila dishwasher intake drain light flashing and this is how to replace the run capacitor. Today we're dealing with the Mila incognito dishwasher that has five lights flashing and it goes just part way through a cycle, stops and then the five lights start flashing. It's an F01 error and that means that the temperature sensor may have a short and probably needs to be replaced or the connector might be corroded. So I've taken off the lower kick panel and then right there in front of me on the incognito, that's the temperature probe and sensor. I'm gonna pull it out just to show you how easy it is to pull out and put back in. It just goes inside of a rubber grommet. You can just push it back in. And then we're also gonna undo the electrical connector and make sure it's clean. You can spray some electrical cleaner in there, make sure that's okay and put it back. On this dishwasher, it actually wasn't the dishwasher causing the fault, but it was the water heater was stuck on full blast and the water temperature coming in, instead of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, it was 140 degrees Fahrenheit and that caused the error. So it could be something to check. We noticed that the water heater pressure relief valve was shooting water out and the water heater was just stuck on full blast. Could be what's causing your Miele dishwasher to have the first five program lights flash. Or also could be this sensor, which you can get from Miele USA. Just put in your, give them your model number and tell them you need the pressure, or I'm sorry, you need the temperature sensor and they can send it to you. And again, really easy to put in. You just take off the bottom panel called the uh, kick panel or toe panel and then you take off a little metal panel in front and then right there is your temperature sensor you can just pull it out it's good to get the water out of that little sump area first because otherwise water will pour into the pan all right thanks so much draining the drains constantly are and so i'm looking at the area where the water comes in i'm wondering if maybe the fill valve is stuck slightly open and water's creeping in so I'm watching that part, but I think probably what's happening is that this drain hose comes right off the garbage disposer, and when water fills the sink, I think it's flooding the dishwasher. So we're gonna build the drain hose in a wide, high arc, so the water cannot flow from the sink to the garbage disposal and flood the dishwasher. So that's important. You don't want to have this configuration. You want to make sure it's bent up. So I've attached a zip tie to one of the plumbing fixtures to be able to hold the drain hose up higher. And now when the sink fills with water, water can't flow backwards into the dishwasher. And that'll get rid of the Mila dishwasher that constantly drains. So when you close the door and you turn it on, drain kicks in like it normally would, but it doesn't stop. It just keeps draining and draining and draining and draining. And this indicates that some water has gotten into the bottom drip tray. 
So we need to check that out and sponge out the water that's there to make the dishwasher work again and then figure out why water got in there in the first place. So I'm going to remove this bottom kick panel, make sure we've unplugged it already. I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver on a little ratchet that lets me get into a tight spot and I just have to remove these two Phillips head screws to get this bottom plate off. And that'll give me access to the drip pan. So now I need to grab the plate and wiggle it loose. This one's on there pretty tight, so I'm going to pull it off from one end and then get that off to the side. Then we have really easy access to the drip pan. We just need a sponge and a bowl to be able to get the water out. It ended up being about two cups of water. So I'm just going to confirm that it's unplugged because you don't want to combine electricity with water and putting your hand in there. You're going to get shocked bad. So I confirm that it's unplugged. And now I'll just use my sponge to push in on the water and the drip tray get it nice and wet and then I'll just wring it out into the bowl. You might have to do that 15 to 20 times. In this case it was probably 12 times get rid of all the water. It just depends how much water gets in there. So again just put it in, saturate it, and then squeeze out the water. You can also take the dishwasher out of the cabinet and tip it at 45 degrees onto a towel now I get the water out really fast. This method just helps you avoid having to remove it from the cabinet, which sometimes, because of the way the flooring is designed, is, is very difficult. So we've got the water out, and we're going to Turn it on, pick a cycle, we we'll use program number three, and then you can hear it draining like it should, and then we can hear the water start filling yeah. in. <laughs> this is the normal sound. Well, I, got, I got this water out. The problem with this dishwasher is that the water kept filling in and wouldn't stop. The fill valve opened up but remained open. So I'm just looking underneath here I, I think to see if I can see any leak while it's filling. It, it just happens. So I, gotta change I don't see a leak, but I notice uh, that the fill just keeps going and going longer than it should. And that points to a faulty yeah. fill valve, and that's why it flooded in the first place. The fill valve it is not filling very well or very fast and often gets the intake drain light error. So we're going to put in this new fill valve. Here's the part number. And this is not the Mila fill valve. This is just a generic one that cost a lot less. The uh, Mila one comes in at about $220. This is just a common one that's used on most other types of dishwashers. This is a little brass elbow that you have to get to that goes along with it. Uh, it doesn't come with the parts. You have to buy that separately. But yeah, this dishwasher is just making like a machine gun noise during the fill cycle and then the intake drain light comes on. So um, the valve is probably not fully opening. It's just kind of going back and forth. Here's the sound it's making. This is the, this is the old valve. So we turned off the power and we turned off the water and now we're going to remove the compression fitting on the old valve. Just spin that off. Use a wrench to, to loosen it and then just take it off. Again, make sure you've turned off the water. And we got a little towel down there to catch water that might come out. I'm going to um, run the fill line into this little jar just to make sure there's no sediment. So I'm going to run some clear water 
just to make sure there's nothing caught in this hose. So that water looks great. And now we're going to do the procedure. We're gonna pull this old fill valve out toward us. Usually they give you a pretty long line here from Mila. And we use a screwdriver to pry off the old case. Here's a close up. Just have to pry in a couple of spots with a standard head screwdriver, you can get that case off. Now I'm going to take this plastic hose and pull it back. I'm gonna use some vice grips to kind of keep it back about probably a foot and a half. Give me some room to work. Now I use a, uh, pliers to move this hose clamp back about 10 inches and make sure it's unplugged. And then I'm gonna use my dikes to cut the wire connector right here near, near the solenoids and I'll pull that through and that's going to be the power that I'll use to power up the new fill valve. I'm going to measure probably about eight inches away and I'll cut through the tube using my diagonal pliers or dikes. I'll snip through that tube. You can use a razor knife too. And here's the old one. Again, Mila wants about 200 something dollars for that and you can probably get these little generic valves for about 40 bucks. So I'm going to push that in to the hose that goes to the dishwasher and then I'll use my pliers to bring the hose clamp down on it. So I've got a good watertight connection. Now I'm going to take this power wire and split it and then I'll strip off about a quarter inch and I'll put on these little spade connectors. You got to get these spade connectors at the hardware store and they just crimp on to the wire. And that's what you're going to use to bring power to the new fill valve. So I've got both spade connectors on. So I put those on to the new fill valve. I've got my water line. I've got the power. Now I can loosen the vice grips and bring the tube back where it was. That kind of protects the power wire. And next I want to wrap, or I want to put the um, brass elbow in. So I put some Teflon tape around it so I get a watertight connection. And I put that on by hand and then I use a wrench to get it a little bit tighter. It's probably going to do about three more turns once you get it with the wrench. And that should give you a good watertight connection. And then I'll put electrical tape over the metal parts of those two spade conductors so that they won't touch anything metal underneath the sink. I've got my compression fitting back on there from the water coming from the house. And I used a couple of screws to secure the fill valve up against the wall underneath the sink. And then we're just going to test it out. So this is the Mila dishwasher. So it's got water coming in fine now. Um, the water level should be should reach up to the bottom of the triple filter white handle. Then you know you've got the right amount of water coming in. So this one looks great. So the procedure worked really good. It only takes about probably 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And you'll save uh, almost $200. So I'm just testing it here. I press the button until it flashes and then I press it one more time and that'll make it reset and drain all the water out. And then I'll start it up and just make sure that it's filling correctly without all that crazy machine gun noise. So that's the correct noise that we should hear. This will work for almost all Mila dishwashers regardless of the model. Here's the new one. To fix a guide today we're dealing with a Mila dishwasher that had the wrong type of detergent poured in and it's all bubbly and it won't progress. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to shut off the power so turn off the power button. I'm going to turn the dial to the stop position. And then I'll turn it back on by pressing the power button. 
I'll turn the switch to normal, which is just one of the cycles. And then when I press the start button, it should drain away all those bubbles. We can see the water <coughs> draining away, so that works great. It's a good idea to pour in some vinegar, maybe a cup of vinegar, and let it sit for about 20 minutes before you do this, and that'll break apart all the bubbles, and that'll fix the problem. But it's a common problem, sometimes people by accident pour dishwashing soap in, and it just bubbles up too much. So this is a good way, good way to cure it. This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with the Mila dishwasher with an F14 error, which indicates that the circulation pump is not able to create enough water pressure to really clean the dishes, and you get the intake drain light error or maybe F14 on the display. So first we're gonna make sure we have unplugged it or turned off the breaker so we don't have power. Uh, prior to that, it'd be good to make sure you have run a drain cycle so you've gotten most all the water out of the dishwasher. There'll still be a little bit left in the sump, but it's good to get rid of as much as you can. Then we're going to remove the filter and then using a turkey baster and a cup, we'll just get rid of the one or two inches that is left in the sump. This way, when you turn it on its side, there won't be as much wa water that'll end up on the floor. So we pulled it out away from the cabinet and because they've given you usually enough of a drain tube length and also intake length, it, it's pretty easy to pull it out of the cabinet without having to uninstall those parts. We're going to take off the drip pan now. That'll let us get this drip plate off. So to get put our partition kit on, we're going to remove the motor, and to do that, we just got to remove a few connections. First, we'll do the electrical. These are the electrical connections for the motor itself. So we're just going to push down on this little lever, and we can wiggle that one off. These have these little push downs right here. Wiggle that one off. Get the earth connection, the green one off. So those are the connections for the motor. Those are gone. And now we're going to do the one <coughs> for the heater pressure switch. We're going to take off the ground connector. And then there's one connector on this model. Other models have more. This one just has one connector in the back, a blue one. Push down on the tab. Wiggle that one out. And we want to rotate the switch toward us. That little clip comes loose and then we can pull it out. That's the heater pressure switch. It's good to get that out of the way because otherwise it's kind of hard to get the motor out. We're going to take off this modular connector. This is for the top solo solenoid. This is the one that <coughs> sends water just to the top arms. So we can disconnect that. Get that disconnected. And now we're going to do these hoses. We have this hose and this hose. We we'll use these hose clamp pliers. Makes it a little bit easier. Get that out of the way. Get a little bit of water coming out. <coughs> we'll this one off. <coughs> All right, get those out. Get that little bolt off. Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. Little bolt. Just get that off. Okay, so we got the hose connections off, we have the electrical connections off. Now we can bring the motor toward us. We're going to pull the back part out first. And sometimes you want to use a little standard head screwdriver to give you a start. 
This is somewhat flexible, so you can push this back and then get that motor coming towards you. And then it'll slip out of its connection here in the sump and also here. There we go, and there's the motor. So the reason we're putting in the partition kit and we're going to be putting in a new run capacitor is the motor will run, the circulation motor runs, but it doesn't run long enough. It cuts out as if it's under duress. It could be that there's just some corrosion and the impeller can't move as freely as it should. Another reason you'd put a partition kit in is you may find that there is a leak coming out of a little weep hole right here. Water is dribbling out. And this one, I don't think we have that going on, but I think there is some corrosion. So just took off this panel, just set that off to the side. That's not going to, we're not going to do anything with that one. And we will be replacing this seal give you a new one with your partition kit next thing is you got to get off the impeller and to do that you need standard head screwdriver we need a pair of pliers or channel locks to grab here they're going to give you a new impeller too so remember these impellers kind of funny they're opposite threads so instead of going righty tidy it's going to be righty loosen and we just got to put a screwdriver in here to keep the motor from turning as we do that. There we go. All right, that loosened up. So I'll go ahead and get this pillar off. Again, you're turning it to the right, which is usually tightening, but in a lot of pumps, it's opposite. <clears throat> so we can see old, old one and the new one. A little bit corroded. Could be the trouble. So this should help. Okay, now at this point, we can take off this panel, just lift it up, it should come off, and we notice that a little bit of corrosion on the inside of that one. And a little bit of rust on that shaft. So now we put on our new piece. It's only going to go on correctly one way, so let's we'll make sure we got that right. There we go. It's just sitting right, right on top. That's great. Okay, and we have our new impeller. We're gonna put that on and we're gonna tighten it up opposite of what you would think, right? Lefty, lefty tighten. Put that in there tight. Now we're gonna put a screwdriver in there to hold these from moving. I'm gonna be moving it to my, away from me lefty tidy
I'm just turning a little bit further than hand tight. And then <coughs> we'll put on our new seal. Just fits in this little groove. Here. Go. I'm gonna put this piece on. This one back in. screws Set at 14. So we got a new impeller. The other thing that could be causing a weak motor condition is just the degeneration of these copper windings. And in that case, you would need to have a new motor. Very expensive. Okay, <coughs> so we've got our motor all done. I'm going to put it back in. So we just want to look at the alignment. Make sure this rubber seal is still there. Sometimes they fall out. We're going to come in at an angle and we'll push it on in. These little pins will click in right here. Start off at the angle. Take your time. And then we're gonna push that in. This flexes. And then it's gonna go back. I wanna try to get those pins in so they click. There we go. So that locked in. We gotta make sure we put that screw in. We're gonna start putting everything back on. The hoses goes there. This one goes here. Heater pressure switch. <clears throat> so we're going to push it in this way, and then we're going to turn it 90 degrees, and this is going to click in right here. You got to make sure that thing clicks in. So I'm going to put this in this rubber grommet. It's the first step. And then I'm going to rotate, keep pushing in until that engages. All right, so I'm going to, I'm pulling back on this thing and it's, it's locked in. So just make sure, push it down enough where it locks in to position. All right, and then you gotta make sure we put its electrical connector back on, it's the blue one, and the ground. And it'll only go on one way, so you can't do it wrong. Alright, so that one clicked in. We have our electrical connector back on. Put our ground connector back on. Put this motor control back on for the power. You can only go in one way, you can't get it wrong. Blue's on the left, tan's on the right, and then we'll put in the ground connector. As they say in Europe, the earth. And we're going to put on the power for the top solo solenoid. Got that, got that. These hose connections tight. Okay, got that, got that. I'm good. Got all of our electrical. 
All right, we're gonna put that little bolt back in to hold the motor in position. It's a 5 16 This has got the fix it guide today. We have a Miele washing dishwasher that isn't draining. It has the intake drain light flashing. And we open it up, we see there's a bunch of water still at the bottom. So we're gonna see if we can get it to drain. So we close the basket, close the door, and we're gonna turn on the power. Make sure we've got it closed all the way. Turn on the power. We're gonna press in on the start button until the green light flashes. And we'll press it again, and now, you can hear the motor running, but there's no draining. So something is stopping the water from draining. I suspect this air gap up here at the top. So I'm going to turn off power and unscrew the top of the air gap. I took off the little metal piece and then just see if there's anything in there. Oh yeah, and this little hole here in the middle, the blue tube, there's a bunch of junk caught in there. Uh, it looks awful. It looks like a fish bone and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to put the top back on, screw that on, put the cap back on, and then I will close it, turn on the power, and now I can hear it draining and I can see it draining. So that was the reason that the dishwasher was not draining, is that it had a clogged air gap. And doing some testing, it's doing great. The water level came all the way up to the bottom of the white handle. So we know that the intake valve is doing great. It's bringing in the right amount of water. Just checking to make sure there's nothing clogged in these little holes, these little jets in the lower spray arm. Looks good. So put that back. Take out the, the triple filter. Looks good. I'm going to open it up and just see if there's anything that's, that's caught inside the filter too. So everything looks pretty clean inside there. Inside the sump, you can open up the filter, take a look, it looks pretty clean. Lock that one, put that back in. Make sure we lock the lever so the filter can't move. And the middle spray arm looks good. I'm just moving it around, making sure that none of the little holes where water shoots out have any food debris, but it looks great. So it looks like the problem was just due to the clogged air gap up by the dishwasher. Uh, this has got the fix it guide. Today we're dealing with the Mila dishwasher with an F14 error, which indicates that the circulation pump is not able to create enough water pressure to really clean the dishes, and you get the intake drain light error or maybe F14 on the display. You know you have an F14 error problem when the circulation pump activates for maybe 10, 20 seconds and it cuts off, then it turns back on, activates, and turns back off numerous times. For this to happen, the very first part of the cycle is okay and normal, but after it drains the water and does the next cycle, the pumping should be more continuous. There are many things that can cause an F14 problem where the circulation pump won't pump continuously. One of the easy things to fix and pretty inexpensive to fix is the capacitor. So we're going to correct this today by adding a new motor capacitor. So first we're going to make sure we have unplugged it or turned off the breaker so we don't have power. Uh, prior to that, it'd be good to make sure you have run a drain cycle so you've gotten most all the water out of the dishwasher. There'll still be a little bit left in the sump, but it's good to get rid of as much as you can. Then we're going to remove the filter and then using a turkey baster and a cup, we'll just get rid of the one or two inches that is left in the sump. This way, when you turn it on its side, there won't be as much wa water that'll end up on the floor. So we pulled it out away from the cabinet and because they've given you usually enough of a drain tube length and also intake length, it's pretty easy to 
you fill it to pull it out of the cabinet without having to perimeter. uninstall those parts. We're going to take off the drip pan now. is remove the capacitor and I want to short out these two terminals with a screwdriver that has a plastic handle because this can carry a fair amount of voltage can be dangerous so if you short it out like that then the voltage is gone Just for safety's sake I'm going to remove these terminal connections and then we'll just bolt on a new one. Go. Removing this one little nut holds it in. This old one comes a new one. You can install it with the identifying marks on the outside. So that could help another technician. tight. Put these on. Alright, let me just take a second, double check everything. All the connections are on. Drip pan back on. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Okay, we have those back on. I'm going to put these shoes back on. So... Put this on first. Don't want the little worm drive that goes on the back one. The front one. Okay, this one. Worm drive. Okay, so we're gonna <clears throat> So now we need to either plug it back in or turn the breaker back on and then we can test it to see if the circulation motor is able to run correctly now. So after testing it did a great job, so we're back to this is Scott the fix a guide Today we're dealing with the Mila dishwasher that has an F14 error, which means the circulation pump can't generate enough force or enough pressure. And we're going to fix this by trying to get the circulation pump having less friction. First, we have to take the dishwasher out of the cabinet, so we're removing the triple filter. I'm going to try to drain some of the water out of there. So I'm going to turn on the power. I'm going to press the start light until it blinks. And then once it blinks, it takes a couple seconds, I'll press it again and that'll activate 
the drain. It also resets the computer, gets rid of errors, but also will drain out any remaining water. Now open it back up. I'll use a cup and a turkey baster just to get rid of anything left in the sump. It's normal that on the Miele dishwasher there'll be probably about an inch worth of water still left in the sump. So it's good to get that out because we're going to turn the machine on its side and remove these little caps that are covering screws that are holding the dishwasher into the cabinet. So I'm going to remove those, get those screws out, and I'm pulling the dishwasher out. Sometimes you have to lower the feet a little bit too to get it out. It depends how they installed it. So I'm just wiggling it out of the cabinet. And usually they give you enough drain line and intake line where you can get it out without disconnecting those things. But take your time. Make sure you're not going to stretch any of those tubes as you remove it. So now I'm taking off these plates off the bottom feet. They just come right off. You can just wiggle them off. Using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove four small screws that hold on the drip plate on the bottom of the dishwasher. These are pretty easy to get off. Sometimes these are, these are Torx 15. On this model, they're just Phillips head. So I spin those off, and then I can remove the plate, and I'll have access to the circulation motor. Circulation motors are pretty expensive, usually about $500 from Mila. So if you can repair it without replacing it, it's better. And what I'll do next is just have access to this motor. I'm going to remove all of its wire connections and all of its hose connections. There's two water hoses connected to it. And I'm just going to use my spring pliers to get those clamps off. And then I'm going to look for any electrical connector that I can find. There's a couple up on the heater pressure switch that I have to remove. There's a ground connector and a modular connector. And then there's a couple of connectors here for the motor itself. I'm going to remove this little mounting screw that's behind the dishwasher that holds the motor in place. And I'll get the hoses off. There's a little connector also on the top only solenoid at the bottom of the circulation pump. It just comes right off. And then I'm going to use a standard head screwdriver to help me gently pry the back of the circulation motor out of the back of the dishwasher. I'm going to pull it out at about 45 degrees. Just take your time here. Don't rush. Standard head screwdriver, you're just using like a pry bar to help you get it, to get the back of it to move. And it'll come out. You have to just take your time. Wiggle it out. Make sure you have all of your connections off. You don't have to worry too much about where the connections go. You can take a photograph if you'd like to help you, but they can only go back in one way. All the wire connections. You really can't get it wrong. So I'm just wiggling that out. It actually, it's a little bit easier if you remove the heater pressure switch first, but you can take the whole thing out too as one unit. So I've got the whole circulation motor out now, and I'm just going to use my Torx 15 driver to remove four screws that hold the part that's called the partition assembly off of the motor. This will allow me to get to the impeller and the impeller my suspicion is has something caught in it which is reducing how much pressure this motor can create and that's why it's getting the F14. So I'm going to stick a standard head screwdriver in the back of the motor to hold everything from moving. And I'll grab the impeller and I'm going to turn it, instead of righty-tighty, it's going to be righty-loosey. This is a reverse thread circumstance, so righty-loosey. Loose gets it off. So I'll spin it off by hand. Here's the impeller. And now I'm pulling out a little piece of junk that got caught in the impeller. The customer accidentally had their filter loose so some of the junk that was inside the dishwasher got sucked into the impeller and just one of the little parts of the impeller was clogged probably reducing its efficiency by 10 percent that can be enough though to cause an f14 error 
So it was a little piece of plastic. I don't know. Looks like a piece of Tupperware got sucked into the impeller vein. I just pulled that out. So now the best thing is to put a new partition kit in at this point. You can get them from Mila USA online. They're pretty cheap. But if you don't have a kit, then you want to just see if you can get the corrosion off of the parts. I'm taking the corrosion off of the motor shaft by putting it the um, shaft in my drill and then using a wire brush to remove it as I spin it with my drill. It just has a little bit of rust and corrosion that builds up. Usually that points toward the partition seal leaking. So I got all that off. Now I'm putting on the new partition kit sent from Mila USA. You can clean up the old one, but it's better to put a new one in because these seals tend to leak. And the new rubber would be great. This tends to last a long time though, maybe 10 years before it fails. So just getting a new partition kit is a lot smarter than trying to use the old one. So I'm going to put on the impeller that has the obstruction removed from it by going lefty-tighty. So turning it to the left is actually tightening it spinning that on and then I'll use a standard head screwdriver to block the cooling fan in the back to lock the shaft and then I can tighten the impeller. First I'll get it tight by hand and then be careful here but I'm going to be using channel locks to tighten the impeller but don't squeeze too hard because you can break the housing you just want to give it a little bit more of a turn beyond your arm pressure, not too much. That's enough. Okay, now I'm just putting in the gasket that comes with the new partition kit. It's a brand new piece of rubber. Using the old one again would work, but it's a little risky because the rubber tends to get dried out and won't seal as well, so a brand new one's a lot better. Found a little piece of junk caught in the old housing, so I'm getting, getting that out. Just take a good look at everything before you put it back together. Make sure you got rid of all the dirt. It's a rare opportunity to have this all opened up. So I'm going to put this back on and then I'll put the four screws back in. This is one of the, um, the partition housing is available on eBay, the MPE31, and this is just another type for another one of our in one of our Miva dishwashers. And now we're just tightening up the four screws that hold the partition housing in position. Get those in and then just tighten them up. We're going to remove the heater pressure switch by turning to our left and that will allow it to unhook and that just makes it a little bit easier to put the circulation motor back in. So we'll get the circulation motor in position. We're going to come in at about 45 degrees and then once we're into the rubber boots that hold on the, the tubes that go into the sump, then we can push in the back of it we just keep pushing it in until it clicks into position. There'll be two little lugs that lock into the, into the metal plate in the back. We can put in that little screw that holds it in. We're going to make sure we have all of our connections, the two hose connections. And then we have to make sure we have the power connections for the motor. We have the connections for the heater pressure switch. We're going to put that bolt back in that holds the motor in position. And just take your time here before you put on the plate. Make sure you've got your two hose connections back on tight, your clamps are on tight, and make sure that you have all of the ground connections with the green wires, and you have the motor power connections done. You have the heater pressure switch ground connection done and it's electric connections and then put in the four screws the Phillips head screws that hold on the drip plate we just sped up the camera here a little bit to make it go faster 
and then once you get those on you want to put the little plates back on those feet and they only go on a certain way you put on the back one first then the front one get both those in position and then we're just going to carefully tilt up the dishwashers back up take your time here we'll line it up inside the cabinet and then gently push it all the way back into position you can then test it to make sure that the F14 error has gone away and that would be due to less friction that the impeller has on its uh, surrounding bearing and that's because you put a new partition kit in and that should get rid of your F14 error. In this case we also had that obstruction in the impeller that was causing probably a huge part of the, the problem. We're just putting all the pieces back in, getting it mounted back in the cabinet. We're going to put the triple filter back in, put the lower spray arm back in before we give it a test. So the F14 is a common problem at about the 10 year mark and this should get rid of that excess of friction that's built up and should get you back to enjoying your dishwasher for maybe another 5 to 10 years. They're really made to last. I'm just going to plug it back in so I can test it. So plug that back in. And we'll turn it on and see if it is able to fill and circulate properly. So in this test, it did really good. So that was a cure for this F14. If this video helps you, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate you coming to our channel. Please subscribe when you get a chance by pressing the subscribe button and also the bell button so we can send you notifications of any new videos that come along. And we have a new thing here called the applaud button. If you really liked the video, if it was helpful to you, if you can click that, we really appreciate that. It shows your um, interest in our, in our channel and your support, and can't thank you enough. Feel free to contact me at the email listed below, which is scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com with any of your questions. And also, if you need to have a uh, FaceTime meeting with me or a Zoom meeting, you can click on one of the links below in the description and we can set up a 15 minute or 30 minute video conference where we can work on your appliance problem. So thanks again for all your support and for watching the video.